All I've got to say is that Path of Exile 3.16 Scourge League looks absolutely amazing, if not a little bit overpacked with an overwhelming amount of new things. Insane new in-game content, a bunch of crazy changes to the passive skill tree, along with a ton of new ways to interact with corrupted items from the Scourge League. This video, we're gonna be going over the patch notes. We're gonna go over all of the major things that you need to know about them and skipping most of the little stuff. And I'm also gonna be making a bunch of other particular videos that are specifically meant to go in depth on certain big changes that you're gonna be seeing in the next league. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new or part of the large percentage of people who are still not subscribed to this YouTube channel, make sure that you do that so that these videos will show right up in your feed, and make sure to like the video if you're enjoying all the content. Now, these patch notes are pretty insane. There is a ton to go over here. We're going to go over all of the things that I think are the most important of all of these changes. We're not going to get too in-depth here. I'm going to be making separate videos on the specific things that I think we need to go in-depth on. So let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to be talking about are the new skills. There's a bunch of new skills here, and interestingly, most of them seem to be party-based skills. We've got anything from like literally giving you a lightsaber all the way to a giant tornado that you can get, uh, you've got like the ability from Tracer from Overwatch where you can just kind of go back in time and like heal and get your mana back and stuff. We have a new concoction type gem that's going to be a poisonous concoction. And then we have a bunch of link gems, which basically links your destiny to a party member or potentially a minion, depending on what, uh, what stuff happens later in the passive tree that allows you to give them some benefits from your character. And also if they die, so do you. The new gems this time are interesting. Um, they definitely look a lot more well thought out than the 19 that we got from the previous patch. These all look pretty cool in general. Looks like all of them will be useful for their individual things, so that's a pretty big positive. They have introduced Tainted Chromatic Jeweler, Fusing, and Blessing Orbs. These are going to be orbs that allow you to use them. They, they basically do the same exact thing of the non-tainted version, except that you can use them on corrupted items. These are going to exclusively drop from Scourge enemies. Same exact thing as you would just craft them on the bench, uh, like you did before, so nothing too crazy there. They said that they're going to drop relatively often. It should be similar drop rates to how the normal ones drop in the main game. That's pretty big. Some minor changes that we're getting is that there are going to be more colorblind options for things like being able to see which gems you have inserted into your gear. That's pretty cool. Map fragments and all kinds of other fragments are going to now be able to stack. Huge quality of life change. We're getting things like uh, fragments to like Etzeria's Realm, Incubators, uh, Scarabs, all those kinds of things are now going to be able to stack. That's huge. And noticeably, we're not getting the changes to Act 2 yet. They just said they're updating some animations. We're not getting those just yet. Expedition is being added into the main game. It's going to be starting in Act 6. This is notable because there are very few leagues that actually start showing up in the main campaign. This means that at Act 6 and onwards, you can start actually getting some of the leveling gear that you could have before from Expedition stuff. They are replacing Perondis with Expedition. Brondis is just completely gone. Say goodbye to the fat man because he is done. He's not coming back. Pretty much everything having to do with Perondis is effectively being removed. All of the things that previously gave like Perondis Scarabs and Perondis effects are now going to give expedition versions of those same things. So that's pretty cool. I am pretty happy to see them remove some of these very, very old items. You'll notice that uniques have been added to the core drop pool, like seven league step. This is pretty big. This dropping from the core drop pool hopefully will make it a little bit more common, but I kind of doubt it. I think it's going to be pretty rare still. They're making massive guild improvements. Guilds are going to be something that you can actually have now. Like you can have a guild of your friends and people to play with. You can actually like interact with the stash well. You're gonna have a guild hideout that you can decorate with whatever you want. And did I mention that they're removing the costs for all of the standard decorations? A lot of really good changes for guilds and I am going to be creating a guild as well. Um, if you're interested in that, join my Discord. And also while you're at it, if you wanna see my initial like reaction to the whole everything that happened, make sure to go check out my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash big ducks, which you should go follow by the way. You can go check out the VOD there if you want the full, you know, reveal. And I mean, I was pretty, uh, I was pretty much at a loss for words for most of it. It's kind of insane. One big new thing that we're getting is the Uber in game content. Now you might've seen some of this being revealed on Twitter as well as some other places, but we're getting blight ravaged maps. We're getting unrelenting timeless emblems. We are getting a whole bunch of new stuff, including like new breach domains, a bunch of uniques that go into all these areas. And I know a lot of people have been concerned that like, well, I'm never going to be able to do all this stuff. Why should I care? When there are varied levels of content that you can do in the economy, 
varied levels of things that you can farm, it is good for everyone because typically in Path of Exile, the thing that you look at as progression is like, well, what bosses am I able to kill? How much content have I done? It's typically not like how much money you have, right? And when there are these varied tiers of content, it allows you to progress through them a little bit easier because they, you know, the items from the very top will kind of trickle down into other places. In a normal economy, this doesn't work. I'm not gonna get into economics because a bunch of people probably get upset with me, but that's the idea. So this is going to be super powerful and of note, they have added 10 additional waves to the simulacrum and now has a total of 30 waves. Good luck to pretty much any of you getting to 30 waves in Simulacrum. That is pretty nuts. Now, another big thing that they told us that they were going to do is they were going to be changing the Atlas to have only four regions. That means they're going to have 16 Watchstones now and a bunch of maps are being removed. Notably, there are a bunch of maps that people hate being removed. And there's also a bunch of maps that people really like being removed. Uh, so like Bramble Valley is no longer going to be in, so we don't have to deal with that terrible map anymore. But also they're taking out things like Beach and Burial Chambers is being removed, as well as like Cage and among other things, Channel. So there's a lot of maps that are not going to be in the Atlas currently, but maybe some of those will come back next league. Because what they're doing is they're reducing the Atlas amount of maps to 118 instead of the 164 that we had previously. And on top of this, they're going to make it so that in general, you get more map drops now for completing each of these actual maps. It's 1.5 per map instead of 1. So this should even out pretty well. Uh, they said that it's potentially going to be even a little higher than it was before, but I don't know if that math evens out. Either way, it is going to be easier to get map drops just because you don't have to complete as many different maps to be able to get that high percentage. Also, the map tiers and locations have been shuffled, so the vast majority of maps are going to be at different tiers now. That's pretty cool. They've moved around where all the base types are dropping because we're only going to have four regions now instead of like a bunch of them. They have also listed where all of the divination cards and such will drop now if you're interested in any particular divination card I suggest that you look in here and they have done the thing that I was hoping that they would where they have just put all of the atlas passives into one zone so now each of the individual regions have all of the harvest stuff all of the beyond all the beyond stuff all of the everything all in their own zone as far as I can tell from this list they've consolidated a lot of the nodes to be multiple things that you get all of the benefit of one, of one area should be pretty nice they've also added in a bunch of expedition passives these look pretty pretty good, as in we get like increased explosive radius in areas, number of explosives that are available to us, more logbooks, all kinds of cool stuff. As said previously, they have combined a bunch of these Atlas passives as well as moved things around or removed certain things just to be able to fit all of them into one zone without it taking too many nodes. Now for anybody who cares about Delve, that's unfortunately not me, so I'm not going to go super deep into this, but Delve has been normalized to where you don't need to go as deep anymore, and you're also going to be able to start much further in Delve if you've completed into maps. So if you've say got into like tier 16 maps you're not going to be going into tier 1 map equivalent delves you'll be going up into like tier 13 or 14 and also you'll see that depth 1500 now is equivalent to the previous 6000 depth they've made it so that you can see bosses a lot easier and they've also made it so that the rewards from those bosses are substantially better they're making it so that biomes can actually spawn lower deeper down in delve and they're also making it so that the initial scaling of the azurite mine goes faster delve should be a lot easier to interact with now especially since you don't have to like start from scratch essentially if you've already done a bunch of mapping. Another thing that I didn't notice earlier is that enchanted fossils are being changed into deft fossils which now grant more crit modifiers and no attribute modifiers and encrusted fossils have been renamed to fundamental fossils which now grants more attribute modifiers and no critical modifiers. This is very very interesting because it means that it's potentially easier to get attribute stacking gear. I think this is one of the first times that we've actually been able to target attribute stats ever. I'm not 100% certain about that, but yeah. You might have already heard this one, but the labyrinth is being changed to where you don't need to find the trials of ascendancy in maps anymore. They're going to spawn in yellow maps, and all you need is the little entry key to be able to get into the Uber Lab. Very big change for early on. You don't have to worry about not being able to get into Uber Lab and not getting your fourth ascendancy. You're pretty much guaranteed it now. Already talked about this extensively in a previous video. Make sure to go check out that if you're interested in ailment mitigation we are going to be skipping it for now. Same thing with flasks, utility flasks, and also all of this. We have gone through this extensively in my first video talking about the Balance Manifesto. Pretty much nothing as far as I can really tell has changed here. Might be some slight number tweaks, but this is all pretty much exactly the same. The only thing 
thing that we have actually gotten now is that the survival unique jewels that are available from through sacred ground, as they said, they were going to be giving us some specific numbers on these kinds of things, and we actually do have them now. And there are three main ways that we're going to be able to gain flash charges that are outside of the normal just kill mobs and get some. One is going to be that the first survival instincts is going to make it so that flasks simply have 50% chance to not actually consume their charges. So that means that randomly you just won't have as many flasks consumed. That's pretty strong. The next one is going to be flasks gain two charges when you hit a non-unique enemy. No more than once per second, but still two charges per flask per enemy hit. That is pretty solid. And then last is going to be survival secrets, which means flasks gain two charges every three seconds while they are inactive. And then on top of that, they're going to have less flask effect duration. So the idea here is that something like this would be somewhat useful for long boss encounters. Something like this middle one is going to be good for builds that want to gain a bunch of flash charges by hitting enemies. Maybe you don't clear very quickly, but you still want to be able to gain them up. And then maybe for builds that focus on flasks in general, might be able to get a lot of, you know, chance for flasks to not consume charges. This is pretty powerful as well. I'm interested to see what people are able to come up with when it comes to these survival jewels and if people will actually use them. And moving down, we've talked about the life recovery from Ranger. We've talked about the core character defenses and recovery. There's not a lot in here that has changed as far as I can tell. I look through the numbers and they seem mostly the same. This is just going to come down to when we actually see the skill tree and when we get that loaded in a path of building, good luck to the path of building devs. So one thing that we did get the actual numbers on is going to be fortify. So now what happens is that sources of fortify now grant a number of stacks of fortification based on the percentage of the enemy's ailment threshold dealt by the hit that applied fortify to you. With a large bonus to fortification stacks against rare or unique monsters. You have 1% less damage taken from hits for each stack stack of fortification, and fortification lasts 5 seconds by default. Fortification for multiple melee hits or different sources stacks up to a default cap of 20 stacks. You can only gain fortification stacks from one hit every 0.2 seconds. So essentially what this means is that you're going to be able to gain a bunch of just less damage taken for melee builds as long as you're hitting relatively hard and random builds that try to just put fortify onto their characters is no longer going to work. Of note, the hardened scars passive is now less damage taken over time while recovering life from a life flask. It is no longer fortify. The champion's fortitude notable now grants you 20 stacks of fortification, which is pretty cool. And then there are also a bunch of different changes in here, such as perseverance, by example, melee hits with stun fortify, meaning that you're going to get fortify stacks for if you are stunning. There's a bunch of good stuff in here, so if you're interested in fortify, make sure to read through this. Or as we have talked about pretty extensively in a previous video, there's not really much to go over here, as well as the aura clusters, as well as curses. We haven't learned very much there. Also, they haven't given us very much more information about elemental damage over time, but according to Chris Wilson, they have a goal with the cold and burning damage over time abilities that they should even out roughly the same as well as there be potential for them to be a little bit higher in damage with the new changes to items and the skill tree and such. We have gotten clarification on flame surge as well as the attack based mechanic that allows you to deal more burning damage to a targeted enemy. Flame surge now creates a burning ground that deals damage equal to a percentage of that ignite that you hit an ignited enemy. So burning ground can be created every two seconds with 50% of the ignite damage on the enemy converted to burning ground. So so what I'm assuming is that Burning Ground is just going to be created by igniting attacks and Flame Surge also is going to give you access to the Burning Ground mechanic for spells. That's the idea. Now, everything else is just some random stuff that they've kind of added into here. I'm going to try to just go through this quickly so we can get to the things that I feel matter. And there's a few of them that we do want to talk about, but there's just a bunch of random information here for the most part. So we're going to go through it. One thing is that Cluster Jewels now are going to have some of their stats moved on to other locations. I'm going to make a video talking about the new mastery mechanic as well as the new skill tree stuff, so look out for that coming soon. Also, as they said previously, damage over time builds didn't have access to a good amount of damage over time modifiers on the tree, so they're adding a bunch of those. That's really solid. They are also going to be moving life into just generic nodes towards the start of all of the different, you know, uh, characters, meaning like at the beginning of Ranger, there's going to be a little bit more life, shadow, all that kind of stuff, specifically on the right side of the tree. And the Scion life square is turning back into a life wheel and it is going to have its life totals reduced a little bit. They've also added a bunch of clusters to the spell tree for things like spell block, spell suppression, a bunch of life gain mechanics here, energy shield and ailment mitigation, curse mitigation, all kinds of good stuff. One big thing that they've done is they've moved keystones around the tree. Once again, I'll be talking about this in another video. These look to be in some pretty nice places. This is a good change once you see it. So as I said previously, there are a few special benefits from cluster jewels that would be more well suited to these masteries. To give you an idea before the other video, masteries are going to be 
something that is in the middle of all of the different clusters of skills on the skill tree. And it's going to allow you to invest into specific kinds of things that are just generic, you know, things that would be good for your build. Of note here, Holy Conquest is being moved into these and you no longer need it on Cluster Jewels. Holy Conquest is the thing that makes it so that you have a brand and when it activates, it jumps to a new target. This is super, super important for getting good clear on brand builds. That means that brands might be really, really strong for leveling depending on which one you go. Also on top of that, Cry Wolf is no longer necessary. It is going to be a mastery and it means that War Cries have a minimum of 10 power. This is gonna be something that you can invest onto the tree. It means that you no longer have to worry about obtaining these from other areas could be a pretty big buff for certain builds. Now let's get into the ascendancy changes. Some of these I'm happy with, and there's one in particular that I'm actually really, really upset with. So let's go through them. There are a bunch of changes that are happening to a bunch of the different ascendancy nodes. The Salio Cleansing Water is just getting a little bit of a buff to the amount of physical damage converted into fire damage taken, and it is getting a slight nerf to the increased life recovery rate because this is to account for all of the new life recovery that's going to be available to us. This is just a small buff, and they are removing some of the life recovery, as I said, to account for other things. Gladiator. Now, originally they said that they were going to give us something along the lines of, like, Lucky Block or something like that, but instead what they've gone with is they've buffed Painforge by 2%, They've added a new notable which replaces versatile combatant and this is going to give plus 10 to maximum block chance Now this doesn't say particularly attack block, but it also doesn't say block and spell block So I don't know it just says block I would assume that it means block and spell block essentially what this potentially means for the gladiator is that either 85 85 is possible which is going to be like ridiculously hard to actually scale into if you wanted to even try to do that. But on top of that, it also means that if you do take the versatile combatant node, which is being moved to the tree, 60-60 is very, very easy to come by. I think that's the intended way that you're going to be doing it, is you're just going to be having 60 block and 60 spell block and not, you know, it's just intended as kind of a nerf. But the maximum for builds that really do want to push the absolute maximum block chance is potentially there. Another interesting note is that Violent Retaliation now has Ignore Enemy Monster Physical Damage Reduction if you blocked in the past 20 seconds, and Attack Damage is Lucky if you've blocked in the past 20 seconds. This first part is not as useful as it is easy to get quite a few sources of, you know, ignoring enemy monster physical damage reduction, but attack damage is lucky is potentially really, really big. This could be pretty good. The next one that we're gonna talk about is Inquisitor. It, Pious Path now grants 50% increased effect of Consecrated Ground you create. Consecrated Ground is getting some like curse reduction effectiveness added to it. Inquisitors could potentially very easily just be immune to curses most of the time, so that's pretty cool. Next one's gonna be Raider. Now, a lot a lot of people were worried about Raider because they were thinking like, uh-oh, Raider might get nerfed pretty hard. Raider did suffer a few small nerfs here, but it is in no way making the Ascendancy useless. So first thing is that Quartz Infusion is no longer granting dodge. I kind of expected this. My guess was that it was either going to be Avoidance or Spell Suppression, and they did go with Spell Suppression. 40% chance to suppress spell damage is pretty large. That is almost halfway to being capped, and it's a little bit under a third of the way of getting to capped spell dodge. So this is pretty good. Avatar of the Veil is no longer granting nearby enemies have less accuracy while you have phasing. This is just an overall nerf. It is 100% a nerf, but it's not that big. Less accuracy rating isn't going to be that necessary. Blind will still be good for evasion type build, so this should be okay. And then Avatar of the Chase is no longer granting 35% more chance to evade melee and range. It is now simply granting 10% more chance to evade attacks in general. This is to account for the evasion changes. This is going to be a wash. It shouldn't be too big of a change. Now we move on to the part that I'm, act uh, that I'm actually pretty upset about. Trickster got nerfed is kind of what it feels like. So Patient Reaper got adjusted because there's going to be more recovery rate available on the tree, but this new notable that replaces Ghost Dance, every 10 seconds take no damage over time for 5 seconds? What is this node? Th this doesn't feel like an ascendancy point, this feels worthless. I'm sure that somebody will find a way to utilize this, but as it currently is, I see no reason to go Trickster any more than we did before. Ghost Dance is now available on the tree, so why would you not just go another build and take Ghost Dance and completely ignore the Trickster at this point? I think Trickster, this node that they're gonna provide is bad. I don't think it's good at all. Maybe someone will prove me wrong. I'm hoping to be proven wrong. This doesn't seem good. Rest in peace, Trickster. However, our boy the Saboteur is gaining 5% damage reduction from Born in the Shadows. That is pretty big. Um, the Seismic 
trap build is looking pretty good just gonna say and then the ascendant is getting some changes to reflect the things above now the next big change is that awakened gems are going to be ridiculously good boss farming specifically cirrus farming and the other conquerors of course is going to be very very profitable the tldr of this whole section is that a bunch of the new awakened gems are getting like plus to level of supported gems that that are in there they're getting like i mean anything from like physical gems for added fire minion gems for for minion damage, most of the gems that didn't do anything previously are getting like an additional 5% more damage per gem at level 5. There's a bunch of cool stuff in here. I, I suggest that you go in and check each one of these specifically because there's a bunch of really cool stuff. Interestingly, melee is getting some of its strike range removed from the skills and just having melee strike range generically added to the tree. That's honestly pretty cool. I don't know if this is going to fix melee in any meaningful way, but it is a step in the right direction in my opinion. Now we're going to get on to some of the nerfs here uh shield skills are being obliterated uh specifically the one that most people are worrying about is spectral shield throw i just want you to read these numbers with me okay so spectral shield throw is getting a nerf to its base attack time it is getting a nerf to its scaling it's going to be basically if you remember how it scaled previously it was like four to five and then five to seven and then six to eight and so on and so forth well now that's being reduced um at gym level 20 it's going to be five to seven instead of six to eight and it is just being reduced at pretty much all points and if you look at the level 20 damage of the gym previously it did 400 to 600 base damage it's now doing 200 to 300 at level 20 it has lost half of its base damage i'm hoping that this is accounted for in the new armor and evasion changes to shields and such like that i'm really really hoping that's the case but i feel like any non-bleed type it builds that we're going special shield throw got a pretty sizable nerf here forbidden right and totems um forbidden right actually survived for self cast so if you played a self cast forbidden right build it seems like you are a-okay however <laughs> if you played a forbidden right totem build character totem life has been reduced by approximately 60 percent yeah i don't think that forbidden right totems is going to be that good anymore it'll probably still be somewhat okay but this does not look like the way that you want to go at the moment Hopefully, if we see some damage numbers and such in the near future, maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that Forbidden Right Totems is simply dead. However, keep in mind that this is a buff to generic totems in general because they're going to be way tankier now. They just take a ton less damage from enemies and deal more damage to themselves, right? So that means that Forbidden Right Totems are both going to do less damage and more damage to themselves. So it's, it's not looking great, boys. The issues with some of the 3.15 skills are being addressed. However, there's a few in here that I think probably needed some more love. Absolution is getting some pretty sizable buffs. I still think it's going to be bad. Ambush is essentially just like you crit whenever you use this now. Explosive Concoction supposedly is going to be good. And then there's another Poisonous Concoction build as well. And then Voltaxic Burst is getting 1% more damage with hits and ailments for each cast of this spell that is currently waiting. I think this, the Voltaxic Burst change, is potentially the biggest one. I think this might make something work. Next is that they're nerfing cast on trigger mana multipliers. It's going to cost even more mana than it did before. I know this looks deceiving, but essentially what's happening is that the cost of the spells that you're triggering is going up and the cost of the actual attack itself is going down. They said that this should like wash out, but I don't believe it. I think this is a mana nerf. Uh, spectral throw mana cost adjusted. Uh, okay. They said they're buffing up the base ward strength. I don't think this is going to do anything. I think ward is still going to be terrible. They are balancing a bunch of the breach uniques for the new uber stuff. There is a bunch of cool unique items that is coming from this. It seems pretty insane. There is also going to be a unique item that makes it so that your left four magic flasks are going to just always be on. It looks like Headhunter potentially has some, uh, has some, you know, like competition for the belt slot for ridiculous belts. As I said previously, they are making a critical strike support tag, and this is something that is going to be useful on fossils, as I said before. Etziri is having a couple of her drops move around. They're moving Pledge of Hands as a drop from Uber Etziri. It's a little late. Nobody really uses Pledge of Hands anymore, but thanks, I guess. And Etziri's Disfavor is being moved to the base Etziri, meaning like the level 70 Etziri. Essentially, what this means is that Etziri's Disfavor is going to be much more available early on in the league if you just want like an easy leveling axe or something to like get you through maps or something like that. And we now have a way to farm Pledge of Hands, I guess. So that's cool. Traps and Mines are gaining Clever Control construction as a base and they're going to be able to buff it back up to previous levels with a clever construction notable passive so that should be pretty cool now traps and mines when you use them early on in the game won't just get killed by enemies 
pretty solid. Volimortal Call is coming back and they're giving it a 60 second cooldown so the builds can't become permanently immune. Uh, that's kind of cool, I guess. There were some standard League boys that were basically becoming completely immune to damage. As far as I was told by chat, this is like the Fulcrum Cyclone build is being nerfed. Uh, that's specifically what this is targeting, apparently. It's making it so that you can no longer just get like zero cost of channeling on skills. I, I don't know what, what that is. I don't know very much about the Fulcrum Cyclone build, but apparently that's what this is nerfing. They are also going to be moving a bunch of the different meta crafting modifiers just into generic maps instead of you having to go into specific areas to find them. Great change. I love it. On top of that, they're also making it so that when you unveil a craft, you get all levels of the craft now immediately when you unlock it the first time. One change that I wasn't expecting is that the Sacred Blossom boss fight, which is, you know, the, the harvest boss, which no one really does, the Forbidden Shaco is just being removed, essentially. And guess what they're doing? You know how Replica Forbidden Shaco is really powerful? Well, they're turning Replica Forbidden Shaco into normal Forbidden Shaco, and they're putting it on the Harvest boss fight. I don't exactly know how I feel about this. I don't know if it's going to make it more common or less common. I don't know. Very weird change, but okay, that's cool. It also means that in standard, any normal Shaco helmets that you had before can now be upgraded to the overpowered one, so I guess that's cool. They're changing added damage to quivers. I don't really understand this too much. It just seems like they're adding a bunch of, you know, cool added damage stuff seems good for quiver builds um also you can't use quivers on unarmed characters anymore rest in peace they've updated some of the trap enchantments for like trap abilities they no longer grant cast speed which doesn't apply to them not that big of a deal golems are getting some more regen harvest crafts it's they're basically like combining alchemy and chaos based harvest craft so it's a little bit easier to use those on generic items that's pretty good synthesis maps are being buffed they're going to have higher pack size item quantity and rarity um, triggered marks this is an interesting change because you might remember previously there they were made so that if you were triggering marks from a ring it constantly took your mana well now they're not going to constantly take your mana anymore but it seems like by the wording that i see here is that when you apply it with a triggered mark you're not going to be able to apply it to other mobs until that one dies or the mark runs out. I hope that's not the case, but we'll see. There's a new tornado skill, and there's another skill that's called tornado, so they changed it. Um, syndicate operatives seem to be getting a pretty sizable nerf. Also, notably, this is going to fix players taking large bursts of damage with additional projectiles, because there's a couple mobs that are being fixed here. It seems like elemental minions got a really big nerf here. I'm sure they'll still be fine, as they always are. But as far as I can tell, they haven't really changed anything a sizable here that, you know, accounts for that problem with elemental equilibrium that is just being gone. They've capped the amount of negative resistance that you can have to 200. Um, I guess that's cool. There's some PvP changes, a couple small changes of the game, like little things that are being improved and that is gonna be about it for the patch notes um i've done my best to consolidate all this information so you can get just the things that you're interested and need out of it i know it's still kind of a long video but i did my best to get this as short as i possibly can there was a lot to go over in this it really was a very very long set of patch notes look forward to additional videos going in depth on specific mechanics like the new stuff having to do with the skill tree and mastery and all of that look forward to those in the coming days but remember boys if you if you enjoyed the content, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this, and stay safe out there in Rayclast, and I'll see you guys in the next video.